Chapter 526, Exorbitant Price As a member of the occult sect, Yang Lu also formally learned from someone who was a grandmaster of martial arts. Even if he couldn't achieve the same level as his master, it wouldn't be a problem for him beat down a dozen small thugs. However, when he sneakily attacked Tang Xiao, he found that even though he was in the position to strike a sure hit, the opponent was actually able to avoid and pass it by. It was like the opponent had eyes behind his back. What shocked him most, however, was Tang Xiao's speed. With his sharp eyesight he could see the blooming fist in front of him. He shuddered. Truly, it's impossible to judge a man's heart from his face, huh? Tang Xiao's feet moved as he appeared at Yang Li's side. His fingers pointed and pierced several major ceiling acupoints on Yang Li's body directly. He then stepped back twice and stood there, shaking his head and sighing. Yang Lu still wanted to keep striking, yet the sudden sensation coming from his body made his eyes stare wide, with the disbelief bursting from his eyes. Even though he desperately struggled, he found that he couldn't control his body at all. However much he exerted his strength, he was devoid of any strength to move even a bit. You, how did you do it? Yang Li's sharp voice brought along with it a sense of urgency, and even contained an intense fear. How I did it is not important. What's more important is that I kindly helped you safe keeping your stuff and avoided the probability of getting you exposed. Yet you actually attacked me. It is said that even thieves have their own Tao. Heroic thieves or gentlemen thieves do indeed exist, but you don't deserve such a title. I'm afraid that you're nothing but a small, petty thief with only a bit of skill. Many epithets straightly crowned above Yang Li's head. Despite knowing that Yang Lu was just testing him, Tang Xiao still hit him with derogatory words. Upon hearing it, Yang Lu was furious and shouted, You are not allowed to insult me. I just wanted to measure you, who the hell wanted to attack you? I'll not gain a damn advantage from sneakily attacking you. Like I said just now, it's impossible to know a man's heart from his face. Said Tang Xiao indifferently. Who knows whatever wishful machinations are swirling inside your head. You should have heard the common saying that what you hear is just false, while seeing is believing. I saw you attack me with my own eyes. If it wasn't for me knowing Kung Fu as well, my back would have been hit by your fist, wouldn't it? Yang Lu was speechless. He knew that Tang Xiao wouldn't listen to any explanation he said. It was indeed he who started the sneak attack, after all. Though he did that to probe whether Tang Xiao knew Kung Fu and whether he was someone from the occult sect. What do you want, then? Asked Yang Lu slowly. Tang Xiao pondered for a moment and answered, Apologize to me and make compensation. I don't have a problem with apologizing, but how can I compensate you? Asked Yang Lu after staring in a daze. Just apologize first, then I'll tell you, said Tang Xiao. Brother Tang, I apologize for what I just did. I hope you can forgive me, Yang Lu nodded and said. Tang Xiao nodded in satisfaction. After approaching him, he moved lightning fast to unseal his acupoints. When he turned around and started to walk away, he said indifferently, Your box of tools will be returned later. But all the valuables in there will be mine as compensation. What the fuck? Yang Lu, who had just regained his ability to move and was trying to move his feet and hands, turned stiff for a moment. He looked at the back of Tang Xiao as a burst of profane words came out from his mouth. He then grinned bitterly and began to chase Tang Xiao. At this moment, he wished he could trash his own head. He attacked Tang Xiao sneakily and wasn't even able to touch his hair, yet he had to compensate for it with over a billion of his wealth. Although he was not short of money and those things were nothing but trivial possessions to him, it made him very edgy. After pursuing outside, he shouted, Say, Brother Tang, you're really too black-hearted, you know that? Notwithstanding that I'm a heroic thief, you're just a robber. Except for those who have pledged their allegiance to me, anyone who sneakily attacks me like that have become corpses? Tang Xiao glanced at him and sneered. 
If it wasn't because I sensed no malicious intent from you, do you think you would still be standing and talking to me like this? It's just pocket money, get over it. Yang Le gulped down. Despite being reluctant to believe Tang Xiao, he knew that someone who possessed such a terrifying ability was never a friendly kind. What is your identity, Brother Tang? I'm just a student, replied Tang Xiao. If you were a student, then I'm a cop. <laughs> Yang Lu rolled his eyes. Anyways, you do look young though. Ah. Uh. That's right, I felt you were a little familiar before, but I can't remember where I have seen you before. Without responding, Tang Xiao headed straight to his villa and told Yang Lu to wait in the living room while he went to the study room on the second floor. There, he took the black suitcase out of his interspatial ring and opened it, and then put out a stack of paper money, gold, silver, jewelry, and the diamonds from it. He then closed the suitcase and headed downstairs. This is your stuff. Tang Xiao threw the suitcase. After catching it accurately, Yang Lu opened it and checked, as he then nodded and said, in any case, thanks. I gave you back your stuff, so don't smash things randomly again, got it? Said Tang Xiao. Anyways, it's quite late now, and I will accompany you no longer. Go back. However, not only did Yang Lu not leave, he instead sat on the sofa and put his suitcase aside, squeezing out a smile as he looked at Tang Xiao, Bother Tang, it's fate that we met each other, how about having a few cups now? Besides, I have some things I want to ask you. You want to know how I made you unable to move, don't you? Asked Tang Xiao. Yeah, I'm very curious about that, Yang Lun nodded without a shred of hesitation. You possess a very powerful skill, but that's still fine with me. However, that method you used to seal my ability to control my body is something I've never seen nor heard before. I was really shocked, and, and very scared. Tang Xiao pulled a cigarette box from his pocket as he took one and lit it up. After taking a deep puff, he smiled and said, I'm a practitioner of Chinese medicine and I understand the structure of the human body very well. How many bones, muscles, meridians, and acupoints humans have in their body? All of these are very clear and easy for me to find. You should also know about acupoint sealing techniques since you are a member of the occult sect, no? Hiss. Despite Yang Lu having already faintly guessed that Tang Xiao was probably using the acupoint sealing technique, yet he was still shocked by his revelation. Furthermore, the reason why he asked about it was that some people in the occult sect also mastered the said acupoint sealing technique yet the effect was not as severe as Tang Xiao's. It took Yang Lu a bit of time to suppress the shock inside his heart. He rubbed his hand and let out a flattering expression, as he grinned and said, Brother, I don't know if you can approve this presumptuous request of mine, I... I refuse. Tang Xiao rejected him right off the bat. Yang Lu froze. He then forced a smile and said, but you haven't even finished listening to what I'm going to say next. I mean, as long as you're willing to teach that acupoint sealing technique, I want to formally acknowledge you as my master. If you don't want to take me as a disciple, that's fine, I will pay a tuition fee to learn it. I won't accept you as a disciple, so there's no concern about that, said Tang Xiao. I'm fine if you want to pay to learn that skill, but how much can you pay for it, exactly? One billion. Yang Lu stretched out a finger and seriously said. While pointing at the door, Tang Xiao said, I won't send you off, the door is there. Brother, you don't need to rip me off like that, right? Yang Lu said with a strange expression. Even though I successfully stole my master's lifetime wealth before he went to Western Paradise, one billion in tuition fees should be enough, right? Besides, you just robbed one billion of my fortune as well. Tang Xiao shrugged his shoulders and chuckled, you already know that I can rob one billion casually, do you think I will give a damn about one billion more? You must know that one must practice a certain cultivation technique to learn this acupoint sealing technique, and I just happen to have the said cultivation technique. If you learn it, not only will you able to perform the acupoint sealing technique, even your strength will soar. One billion? 
Humph, what a joke. A cultivation technique? Yang Lu was taken aback. He hurriedly asked, what do you mean by cultivation technique? Is it like the inner energy core techniques in the legends? Tang Xiao shook his head as he nodded and said, it is a kind of inner energy core technique, but it's more powerful than those. Yang Li's complexion changed as he fixedly stared at Tang Xiao for half a minute before he solemnly said, 1.5 billion. This is all the wealth I can take out within a short time. Tang Xiao got up. While walking toward the stairs, he lightly said, however much you can offer doesn't have any significance to me. Don't come and bother me if you don't have 10 billion for the tuition fee. Go now, for I don't want to repeat myself for the third time. 10 billion? Yang Lu leaped up from the sofa as disbelief filled his eyes. He had seen people who demanded exorbitant prices like a hungry lion, yet such a ruthless one like Tang Xiao was a never-before-seen case for him. Although he did lie about all his wealth being only 1.5 billion, he absolutely didn't have 10 billion. Even if he added up every bit of his fortune, it would only be 3 billion, more or less. Is this gonna force me to do more good deeds and help those who got their wealth through evil and illegal means to share the responsibility? Yang Lu was indignant and disturbed. However, he knew himself very well. If he could really get 10 billion yuan one day, would he use such a huge sum of money to learn the acupoint sealing technique from Tang Xiao? With such a colossal amount of money, he could wash his hands and make a clean break from that life directly, and enjoy an excellent, wonderful life for good. After returning to the second floor, Tang Xiao watched as Yang Lu left the villa with a trace of a smile on the corner of his mouth. He felt that Yang Lu was a very interesting young man. When he was in the immortal world before, he got acquainted with a thief sex master. Furthermore, had this thief sex master not offended a very powerful adversary, who killed him when he just reached the overarching golden immortal realm, he could probably have become a supreme in the immortal world given time. In the case that, he can really get 10 billion, it means he does have a bit of ability. At that time, accepting him as a disciple wouldn't be an impossibility. Thought Tang Xiao with a smiling expression. Chapter 527, A Scumbag the soft moonlight was as though water as a cool breeze pervaded through the window screen, giving off a cooling feeling. Under the slightly bright lights inside the study room, Tang Xiao sat on the sofa while quietly observing the three objects on the tea table in front of him, the Qin Emperor's imperial jade seal, the ancient bronze lamp, and the guanin vase. Among the five treasures he got from Beijing, the nine phoenix hairpin was the one that he was most familiar with. So there was no need to study, while the golden dragon head was just an ordinary object in his eyes. But he did have hopes and anticipation for the three objects in front of him. I don't have any means to use or invoke the power of fate and destiny contained within the Qin Emperor's imperial jade seal, for the time being. With my current cultivation level, even seeping my spiritual sense into it could cause a heavy injury to my soul, let alone trying to use star force. If I were to use it, the star force inside my body would probably turn chaotic and even directly lead to qi deviation. Hence, studying it is a no for now. The Buddhist Sarira inside the ancient bronze lamp wouldn't be of much help to me for the time being as well. Nevertheless, it's a pseudo-immortal tool, so it would be a suitable treasure to be used by the current me. Tang Xiao thought for a short while before he took out a lighter and lit the lamp. Suddenly, a peculiar exotic fragrance fluttered out. The unique fragrance was intoxicating to the mind and consciousness, and the indescribable feeling sprung up unbidden deep inside the mind. With his formidable mental force, Tang Xiao could keenly perceive that the spiritual qi of heaven and earth began to gradually rise and move toward the room, while a wisp of a special energy appeared gradually in the surroundings. After this energy seeped into his body, Tang Xiao could feel a cool, comfortable sensation and his cultivation speed increased a lot. Focusing Psyche, Calming Qi These two lines emerged out of nowhere inside Tang Xiao's mind, causing his expression to change. Shock instantly appeared on his face,
because he realized his psyche and mind turned particularly clearer the moment after. It was because he could screen and straighten out many of the previously confusing thoughts that sprung up inside his mind, giving him all sorts of understanding and comprehension at the same time. Buddhism devotes particular care to awareness and enlightenment. So to say, the most miraculous effect of this ancient bronze lamp is actually to improve one's perception? An extraordinary light bloomed inside Tang Xiao's eyes. He immediately picked up the last item, the guanin vase. While staring at the dazzling golden liquid inside, he instantly released his spiritual sense. Unfortunately, he was somewhat helpless as he could not figure out what the golden liquid inside was regardless of the means he used to observe it. My cultivation level is too low. I'm unable to refine it. Tang Xiao eventually took back the guanin vase with a helpless expression. He then sat cross-legged and began to cultivate. A night then passed by in an instant, and despite Tang Xiao's cultivation not progressing much, the fragrance permeating from the ancient bronze lamp that penetrated his whole body made his psyche and perception full of vigor. After extinguishing the ancient bronze lamp's light, he took a shower and changed his clothes, and then went to campus after breakfast. Before going out, he disguised himself wearing sunglasses and a cap. If one couldn't recognize his appearance, they would think he was just an ordinary young student. Last night, he had contemplated his interconnected life with Han Xin Guo, and for the time being, he finally decided to compromise. As of now, Han Xin Guo was not Shui Qing Cheng, and even if she was indeed the embodiment of Shui Qing Cheng's reincarnation, Han Xin Guo was just another person before her memory was completely restored. What's more, if hiding was not an option then he could only face it straight on. Not to mention that he would have to live a university life for four years, which meant that he must get along with her during this time and face her as a normal student with his teacher. Although mutual respect and love was not a viable option, striving for a harmonious life as a university student was still a necessity. As expected, when Tang Xiao arrived at the campus, his change of his attitude toward Han Qingwu made her very happy. Although Tang Xiao made an excuse to refuse her offer to have dinner together, the two still got along well after that. Day after day passed by, and Tang Xiao's life waltzed through without a hitch. Besides attending classes, reading books in the library, and going to the cafeteria for meals, he spent most of his time at campus even at night. Gradually, many people began forgetting Tang Xiao's celebrity identity as new topics and new events garnered their attention. At the end of the month, Tang Xiao, as always, left the classroom building along with Hu Qingsong, Yu Kai, and the rest, as they headed to the nearest cafeteria to their classroom building. Brothers, since we don't have class this afternoon, you have any plans? While fiddling with his BMW keys, Yukai asked Xue Chao after he put the book in his hand. I must go to work, said Xue Chao. You're no fun. Yukai rolled his eyes at him and then asked Hu Qingsong, how about you? I'm preparing to go out as well, to find a job and feel the taste of having a job while studying, said Hu Qingsong. Huh? With an odd expression, Yu Kai replied. Say, old who? You have your belly full already, so you don't have to go out to torture yourself, no? Besides, with our classes, we're practically unable to go out at all. Yet you want to use your free time to have a job outside class time for only a few bucks? Also, it's hard to get a good job even for college graduates nowadays. You're just a freshman, dude. Don't tell me you are going to deliver leaflets door to door? I don't expect to find a good job, nor do I expect to have a decent paycheck, said Hu Qingsong. I just want to see all sorts of life and experience the feeling of earning money by myself. To be honest with you, I've never ever gotten a penny on my own since I was born. Stumped and stunned, Yu Kai fell into silence for a while. He then turned to Tang Xiao and asked, Eldest bro, Tang, you couldn't be thinking of going to the library again, right? Your guess is spot on. I'll be going to the library again, indeed, said Tang Xiao with a nod. I haven't found the recent studies on economics, so I'm going to double-check. 
Yu Kai shook his head as he gazed at Hu Ching Song, Old Hu, you want to go out to observe and learn from real life, and I'm kinda bored with my idol life as well. All right then, I'm gonna risk it all and go along with you, buddy. But, have you thought about what kind of job we're going to take? I've already thought about it. There are two that crossed my mind. The first one is a marketing sales and service business, and the second one is a express delivery service. But what I'm looking for is the more relaxed express delivery, said Hu Ching Song. Yu Kai stared blankly, as he patted his forehead and exclaimed, Ah! I suddenly remembered that I have an appointment with Sister Meng to talk about life and ideals, so I won't go with you. Anyhow, you guys are going to the cafeteria to have a bite, right? Then I'll go find Sister Meng. Having said that, this chap straightly blasted himself out of everyone's sight. After looking at the departed Yu Kai's back, Tang Xiao turned to Hu Ching Song and smilingly said, The two jobs you picked are really great. Regardless of the type of job, it will be a very good exercise for you, nonetheless. Work hard, buddy. The earlier you strive, the more you will understand the hardships in life. Sure thing. Hu Ching Song grinned. Rest assured, I'm not going out to play. Afterward, the trio had lunch together, and then Hu Ching Song and Xue Chao left. As for Tang Xiao, he returned to his dorm and took a few books he borrowed two days ago, and then went alone to the campus library. Just as he entered the library he knitted his brows, because the scene he had seen a few times already unfolded again in front of him. There were a lot of male students gathered in the reading area on the first floor, as their eyes kept glancing at several female students in the corner. It must be Mu Weining again. Tang Xiao secretly shook his head. After spending a little time to find several economic books on the bookshelf, he went straight to spot next to the window on the second floor, as he sat down and quietly read the book. Time fleeted by, and half an hour passed by in the blink of an eye. With his fast reading speed, Tang Xiao had already read the second book, and he also had turned over several pages on the third book. He even had made a dozen pages with notes within this half an hour as well. Just go. We're not as suitable for each other. Vague voices came floating from afar. Tang Xiao raised his head, since he recognized the voice, Mu Weining. Shortly after, a loud voice came following. Weining, I really like you from the bottom of my heart. Please give me a chance, I promise that I'll make you happy. Sorry, I don't need it. Weining, you want to leave it like this? It won't do. I'm the campus bow and you're the campus flower. A gifted man and a beautiful woman have always been a good match, so we should be together. You know, I've been preparing for a long time to make this confession to you today. Tell me if you have something you don't like about me, and I'll definitely try to change myself to become a man you like. Fellow student, let me make it clear for you. I don't even know your name, so why must I accept to become your girlfriend? Besides, I already have someone I like. If I were to agree to be your girlfriend, then it won't be fair to you. Please make way, we need to leave. Mu Weining, you are being deliberately perfunctory with me, aren't you? I've already investigated it. You don't have a boyfriend at all. Hey. Let me go. No, I won't let you go. The ruckus got bigger and louder downstairs. Tang Xiao closed the textbook as he got up and walked to the second floor stairway. He looked at the scene below, where a lot of people had already gathered there, and let out a forced, wry smile. He knew that male student, a third-year senior who won the popularity vote as the most handsome male student in Shanghai University for three consecutive years, in a row. Not only did he possess good looks, his academic GPA was also remarkable as well as being the vice-captain of the university's basketball club. It was said that his family was also rich and powerful as well. However, Tang Xiao knew something. About two years ago, he made a female student pregnant, after first abusing and then abandoning her in the end. Another case was when he was in his sophomore year, as he had an affair with 12 girls. 
he had sex with a female student in his car and was caught red-handed by his real girlfriend. His real girlfriend was also swift enough as she recorded the scene with her mobile phone and uploaded it to the campus forum. The footage was deleted quickly after, but many people had already seen it. Put shortly, this male student called Lian Kong was a real scumbag to the core in the eyes of the public, yet not many people at Shanghai University dared to provoke him due to his family background and his figure on the surface, as a pretty good male student. For instance, what was happening at present? There were definitely more than a hundred male students around, yet even though Lian Kong took so many liberties toward Mu Weining, causing the male students to turn indignant and itching to beat up Lian Kong, yet no one really dared to come forward and stand up for her. Chapter 528, Goading Pulling out your blades to help when seeing injustice was the style of a chivalrous warrior in the Jianghu world. Chivalrous he may not be, yet Tang Xiao was unable to not act upon facing such a scene. Ring, ring, ring. A faint ringtone sound came from the mobile phone inside Tang Xiao's pocket. Just as he was about to take it, Jiang Fian, who was next to Mu Weining, dashed toward Lian Kong, as her cherry-like, small mouth bit Lian Kang's hand that was grabbing Mu Weining's wrist. What the hell, are you a fucking dog? Due to the pain, Lian Kong released Mu Weining. He slapped Jiang Fian's cute little face with his backhand, causing her to stumble and fall to the floor. This caused a turmoil among the watching students around. Tang Xiao frowned, yet he didn't act immediately and took out the mobile phone instead. As he looked at the screen and saw that the caller was Kong Xia, he pressed the answer button and said, Wait a bit, there's something I need to deal with. I'll call you back you later. All right. Replied Kong Xia. While going toward the stairs, Tang Xiao clapped his hands and loudly yelled, This is really amazing, awesome. A respected, seven feet big man unexpectedly slapped a small female student until she fell to the floor. The most unbelievable thing for me is all those faces around. Each and every one of them is filled with anger, yet they're all actually cowards. For nobody even dares to come forward to say anything nor stand up for her. TSK, TSK, don't you realize that this is exactly the best chance for you guys to play the hero saving the bell? Do you really want to miss this golden opportunity to hold a bell just because of your groundless fears? Hundreds of eyes fell on Tang Xiao in a flash. Even if there were only a few people who paid attention to Tang Xiao recently, he was still a quite popular individual in the campus, so everyone still recognized him. Furthermore, Tang Xiao's speech made all the male students look ashamed and regretful and causing their faces to turn red. At this time, a well-built male student stood forward and loudly shouted, Don't talk nonsense, Tang Xiao. We're too late to stop it. We just saw that this scumbag surnamed Lian is an eyesore, but we never thought that he would hit someone like that. If I knew, I'd definitely be the first one to help her. Yeah, we were too late. That chap Lian is really shameless, to think that he even dares to hit a female fellow student, and even took so many liberties toward others. What a motherfew asterisk curse scumbag. I'm really ashamed to have an alumnus like Lian Kong. I will certainly spread what happened here today, to let all the students and teachers know his ugly face. I really regret it, why didn't I step out to punch his fucking face and give him a good memory? This damn chap deserves to be beaten. How dare he moved a finger toward the first goddess of our Shanghai University? Hasn't he reflected on his previous attitude when chasing chicks? Amid the scene where numerous male students took their stand and loudly voiced their support, Mu Weining, Li Xinjia, as well as Jiang Fian, who was being propped up by the two girls had their eyes lit up at the same time as they shot glances full of gratitude at Tang Xiao. Beat him up. Suddenly, some people in the crowd shouted, and in just a couple of seconds, dozens of male students rushed toward Lian Kong, punching and kicking his lackeys and easily beating them up. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Mu Weining's group of three squeezed out of the crowd and hurriedly marched toward Tang Xiao. Tang Xiao, thank you. Mu Weining whispered. Tang Xiao slightly smiled and shook his head. He then turned to Jiang Fian and asked, 
Are you all right? Jiang Fian touched her swollen cheek, as she shook her head and said with a smile, I'm fine. Plus, I also bit him. This damn Lian Kong is really sick and disgusting. Had I known that he would beat me, I would have kicked his crotch and made him unable to have a son in this lifetime. Ugh. No matter how big Tang Xiao's boldness was, hearing Jiang Fian's words sent a coldness ran down his spine and made his neck shrunk. At this time, her reply was as though completely verifying the saying that women's heart was the most poisonous one after the hornet's sting. Mu Weining's beautiful face turned red. She reached out to hug Jiang Fian's shoulder and said, Fian, thank you. What are you thanking me for? We're sisters. Jiang Fian shook her head and smilingly said. If we want to thank someone, let's thank Tang Xiao. If it weren't for him, maybe that damn Lian Kong would beat me as well. When Mu Weining's eyes shifted to Tang Xiao, her eyes were particularly bright and dazzling. After a few seconds of silence, she said, Tang Xiao, like sending Buddha to the West. Helping someone must be done until the very end. Will you help me solve this problem completely? Relax. Tang Xiao nodded. I'm not talking about Lian Kong. It's the matter with all the male students, said Mu Weining, shaking her head. What do you mean? Tang Xiao asked with a puzzled expression. Gathering her courage, Mu Weining seriously said, Let's announce to the outside that I'm your girlfriend, and that we're a couple. So I can tell straightly to whoever confesses to me that I already have a boyfriend and won't accept anyone. But but... But this may be very unfair to you, and may bring you some troubles, though. Tang Xiao thought for a while. He recalled what happened a few times in the library, when he encountered Mu Weining surrounded by many male students. Then, he finally nodded and lightly said, All right. I also received a lot of confessions from female students, so this will be mutual beneficial for both of us. Mu Weining suddenly turned excited as she nodded repeatedly, Thank you. Tang Xiao waved his hand as he turned his attention to the chaotic scene and shouted, Everyone, stop. If that surname Lian Chap is dead, then you guys will all be dead too. Besides, the campus will severely punish you if he is severely injured. In a flash, several male students who were currently beating Lian Kong and his fellow classmates realized what kind of consequences their actions would bring, as they halted beating them and retreated. In the opened, cleared spot, Lian Kong and his three classmates were all beaten, bruised black and blue, with bloodstains all over their bodies. The one in the most miserable state was Lian Kong, for one of his arms was obviously broken in an unnatural shape. Shaking his head, Tang Xiao walked toward him and then squatted to grab his arm despite Lian Kang's struggle. With a slight effort, he pulled his hand and mended the bones of his broken arm back to its original position. Arg. A scream like a pig being butchered made everyone present shudder. If you don't want to become disabled, then don't move, said Tang Xiao lightly. I just helped you put your bone back to its original position. But in the next couple of days, don't move about and lift heavy things. Also, go to the campus clinic to deal with your other wounds. While enduring the severe pain, Lian Kong furiously growled, Fuck you, Tang Xiao. I don't need your crocodile tears, you fucking asshole. If it weren't for you, how could this father be beaten like this? Do you dare say it again? Tang Xiao frowned. I just said it. What the fuck can you do to this father, huh? Shouted Lian Kong angrily. Shaking his head, Tang Xiao stretched out his hand and twisted the bone he had just mended, and then trampled his face. As his blood flowed from his nose, he sneered at him and said, You're nothing but a rotten cretin in my eyes, a dog that snarls and snaps at others' kindness. The instant the news about you assailing a girl with obscenities when you confessed to her and then turned into you beating up a female student, is to spread around, I'm afraid that you will lose your reputation and may even be criminally liable. Of course, you indeed have been beaten up by your fellow students, but that was because you've aroused public anger. I'm sure that if the campus authority hears about this, they will also treat them with leniency. 
Having said that, Tang Xiao turned around and walked to Mu Weining's side, as he said with a deep voice. Although Mu Weining is my girlfriend, I was not the first one to beat you. That can be said as me giving you a face, yet you're so shameless and didn't give a damn care about it. You have only yourself to blame for that. And now, we still have our talk about our love life, so we won't waste more of our time with a scumbag like you. Immediately, he reached out to grab Mu Weining's little hand and walked upstairs. His girlfriend? All the male students who were originally secretly appreciating Tang Xiao's act of violence had their eyes turn hostile after hearing Tang Xiao's announced. And those good brains also realized that Tang Xiao seemed to have used them, for they began to savagely beat up Lian Kong just because Tang Xiao sarcastically satirized them in his comments. On the second floor, Tang Xiao brought Mu Weining, Jiang Fian, and Li Xinjie to the desk he was using before and spoke to them, you girls can stay here. I have a trivial matter to deal with and need to make a phone call. Go. I'll be here reading a book, Mu Weining nodded gently and replied. After taking out his mobile, Tang Xiao dialed Kong Xia's cell number and then inquired, All right, I took care of the thing here, more or less. What is it that you need me for? Boss, the executives of our company have been discussing the release date of our health products. We currently have a lot of stocks in inventory, so I decided to throw them into the market on November 1st. Do you think this date is appropriate? Asked Kong Xia. Have you arranged the stores all over the country? Asked Tang Xiao. It's about done. As we made a lot of income, we've set the shops next to the God's Nectar's exclusive agency in each city. The refurbishing is currently in the last stages, and it should be done in the next few days, at the most. What about the marketing and sales staff? Asked Tang Xiao. All of them have been trained for their posts. However, there is still another issue that has yet to be decided, said Kong Xiao. What is it? Asked Tang Xiao. It's about security, said Kong Xia. I'm afraid that an insane rush to snatch all the products will happen once our health products hit the market. Thus, security problems will surely arise at that time. How many manpower do you need, exactly? Asked Tang Xiao. We have calculated. With the help of the security guards assigned to the God's Nectar exclusive agency in each city, we can reduce the needed number of manpower. But we still need about 80 people, at the very least, said Kong Xia. Okay, got it. Said Tang Xiao. I will think of a solution. Also, I'm going to survey every large business district in the vicinity of Shanghai in the near future. If it's not feasible, then we'll build our own site. I happen to know some real estate developers here. Chapter 529, Inviting Someone for Asking Help After hanging up the phone, Tang Xiao thought for a while before searching Jin Xinghui's number. Then, hesitating, he didn't call in the end. He then turned to the three girls and said, What are you girls going to do next? I have something to deal with, so I may not be able to accompany you. Mu Weining was in a very good mood at this time. Even if she was just Tang Xiao's nominal girlfriend, she believed that as long as she put up a persistent effort, becoming his real girlfriend wouldn't be a problem in the future. Thus, she squeezed out a very dazzling, beautiful smile and tenderly said, Then we'll go back to our dorm. So let's leave together. Okay. Tang Xiao picked up the books and put them back on its original shelves. He then selected a few books and registered them at the office, before he left the library with Mu Weining's group. Their departure attracted much attention, but no one dared to come forward to strike up a conversation. However, fearing that Lian Kong would lash out his anger at them, Tang Xiao escorted the three girls right until the downstairs of the female student's dormitory. All right, then we'll go upstairs first. Jiang Fian winked at Mu Weining, as she grinned and dragged Li Xinjie toward the front door of the dormitory building. Mu Weining let out a low chuckle, as she calmly looked at Tang Xiao and said, I know you are very busy, but you should also pay attention to your health. If there's anything I can do for you, call me immediately. 
Relax. I'll take good care of myself, said Tang Xiao with a smile. Suddenly, Mu Weining stepped forward and lifted her hand to fix Tang Xiao's collar that was not too neat. Under everyone's stupefied gazes, she said with a smile, I may be your fake girlfriend, but we still have to look intimate in public. I think that if you hug me now, that will send a very clear message to the male students who have been harassing me, and then everyone will learn that I already belong to a man. Tang Xiao was hesitant, and then glanced at the surrounding. A forced smile appeared on his handsome face as he gently held Mu Weining in his arms, feeling her delicate and gentle body heat and then said, is it all right now? Mu Weining hugged Tang Xiao back. This time, she used her strength and kept hugging going for more than 20 seconds before she reluctantly released Tang Xiao and chuckled. Yeah, it should be fine now. All right then, I'm leaving. Tang Xiao turned and walked away while waving at her. Mu Weining stood there with a very sweet smile, with dimples appearing on her, a classical beauty. Her smiling face that was full of joyous mood could be seen by many people there, arousing the envy and jealousy of the girls yet making the boys brokenhearted. However, the most heartbreaking scene for the male students was not the hug nor her happy smile, but the scene of Mu Weining staring at the back of Tang Xiao as he departed, until he disappeared at the end of the trail in the far distance, as well the reluctance and unwillingness on her face before she turned around and walked toward the dormitory building. The first bell of Shanghai University, Mu Weining has fallen in love with the celebrity student, Tang Xiao. After this news appeared on the Shanghai University forum, the news went viral and only took one hour before all the students, teachers, professors and leaders at Shanghai University to learn about it. In a flash, slander and critic began to flood the comments section of the campus forum by numerous male students, all of which were bombarding Tang Xiao. Many of the commentaries were full of profane words and insults. At the same time, Mu Weining was also ridiculed by a lot of people, particularly by the male students who failed to get her attention. Certainly, there also appeared many commentaries from people who respected and admired Tang Xiao, saying that it was a perfect match between a beauty and a hero. Eventually, after several hours, there were two opposing sides on the campus forum. One side was the hater students and those trolling with anonymous account, and the other one was the students who straightforwardly supported Tang Xiao and Mu Weining. Put shortly, the Shanghai University Forum turned very lively. Tang Xiao, who was one of the main characters of the story, had left Shanghai University at this time and was inside the study room of his villa. He was currently focused on drawing an architectural design. He had previously made an agreement with Jean Shinkue that he would hand over the design to him, yet he hadn't had the time to finish it due to various issues, as well as having his time spent manufacturing various charms after he returned from Beijing. Fortunately, Jean Shinkue wasn't in a hurry since he was still engaged in the preparation for the early stage of the project. As dusk came, Tang Xiao finally put down the paintbrush and pondered for quite a long time. He then took his out mobile phone and dialed Han Qingwu's cell number. At this time, Han Qingwu was currently reading the comments on campus forum in her rented house. Her face was quite rigid and unsightly, and she kept that expression for more than half an hour. Her feelings were quite chaotic, and she couldn't figure out what was wrong with herself. She didn't know why she felt like she just lost a very important thing after learning the news that Tang Xiao and Mu Weining had become lovers. This vexed, edgy, and uncomfortable feeling that overwhelmed her and rendered her helpless frightened her. Ring, ring, ring. Her mobile phone rang, startling her. When she snapped back to her senses, she then realized that there was a cool sensation on her cheeks. Unknowingly, tears had flowed out of her eyes. After grabbing the mobile and looking at the screen, Han Qingwu saw that the caller was Tang Xiao. Her expression looked slightly vacant for a moment, as she wiped off the tears on her face quickly. She then cleared her throat before connecting the call and said, Han Qingwu speaking. Teacher Han, if you have some free time tonight, would you like to have dinner with me? No, I don't have time. The moment Han Qingwu heard Tang Xiao's voice, anger suddenly boiled inside her heart, 
and it was also reflected in her voice. Have I provoked you recently, Teacher Han? Why are you angry with me? Asked Tang Xiao with a wry tone. Is that your business? Blurted out Han Qin Gu. Tang Xiao was silent for a moment, as he then replied in a wry tone, Teacher Han, I'm sincerely inviting you to dinner, though I don't know why your mood isn't good. If you really don't have time, then forget about it. I'll invite you some other day. All right, then I'll hang. Where is it? Feeling that Tang Xiao was going hang up, Han Qingwu hurriedly asked, yet she immediately regretted it. Come to the Everlasting Feast Hall. I'll be there waiting for you, said Tang Xiao. N. Han Qingwu replied as she hung up the phone directly. She didn't understand what was happening to her at this moment, and why she couldn't control her emotions when facing Tang Xiao. Had she fallen in love with him? Or is it because of jealousy? Han Qingwu thought that it was indeed that, yet she felt that it wasn't entirely correct as well. She felt that ever since she heard Tang Xiao's song and zither play at the Shanghai University's freshman welcoming party, as well as after those images kept appearing inside her mind, Tang Xiao's importance became more prominent in her heart all of a sudden. Even without her realizing, she often thought and missed Tang Xiao, his face, his every move, word, and smile. Why would those pictures keep appearing inside my mind? I've lived for more than 20 years and I have never once encountered anything like in those pictures whatsoever. I shouldn't have that kind of memories at all, but why? Han Qingwu rubbed her head. Amid a headache, she suddenly remembered that Tang Xiao invited her to dinner tonight. In a flash, she bounced up from the sofa and dashed into the cloakroom at a speed beyond the limits of an ordinary person. At the Everlasting Feast Hall Inside the deluxe box on the third floor, Tang Xiao was sitting and immersing himself in his thoughts while drinking tea and smoking a cigarette. In the past two weeks, despite the fact that his days were quite busy every day, he still couldn't fulfill what he had promised on some business deals, though those issues had been finished as of now. Ring, ring, ring. His mobile phone interrupted his train of thought, as Tang Xiao grabbed it and saw that the number was from an unfamiliar Beijing number. He creased his brows and immediately pressed the answer button and said, Tang Xiao speaking, may I know who am I speaking with? Hello, Grandmaster Tang. It's Situ Chao here. I and someone from the Jin men and Li families have arrived in Shanghai. Where are you? We're looking for you now. Tang Xiao pondered for a moment and slowly said, Take care of your accommodations first. I'm currently having dinner with someone. After I'm done with it, I'll come over to you and bring what you need. No, no. How can we dare to make Grandmaster Tang come to find us? How about you tell us a place to go and we'll wait for you there? Said Situ Chao hastily. After hesitating, Tang Xiao replied, then head to the Blue Star Villa complex. I live in Villa Number 9 there. I'll be back as fast as possible. All right. After the phone call ended, Tang Xiao shook his head and smiled. Just as he was still thinking as to when those three parties from the occult sect would come to Shanghai to get their stuff they suddenly arrive. However, he just invited Han Qingwu to dinner, so he couldn't ignore her just like that or else it would be quite hopeless for him if he were to ask her for help later. In the front counter on the first floor. While holding a smile, Qi Nand cheerfully greeted the arriving and departing guests. When Han Qingwu, donned in casual attire, came inside, Qi Nand discovered that she had obviously put on makeup, which intensified her beauty. You're here, Teacher Han. Tang Shou told me to come find him here. He should already be here, right? Han Qingwu said with a faint smile. The boss is here and has been waiting for you in the box on the third floor. I'll lead you upstairs. Qi Nan smilingly replied. Thank you. Han Qingwu nodded and thanked her. Please don't be so polite, Teacher Han, said Qi Nan with a smile. You're a friend of our boss, so entertaining you well is my duty. Anyways, you look so gorgeous today, Teacher Han. 
Han Qingwu dazed, and her beautiful face slightly blushed. When she remembered that she put on makeup, she nearly covered her face. She suppressed her awkwardness and squeezed out a smile, Thank you, Manager Chi, you two look very beautiful today. Nah. I'm not that good. I'm an old woman already, said Chi Nand with a smile. If I were at your age, I would have definitely taken Boss Heart from you. Chapter 530, Glib Talk Han Qingwu's smiling face got thicker upon hearing Chi Nan and was about to humbly reply when she suddenly froze. Even her pace to the stairs came to halt. You, what did you just say, Manager Chi? I said I'm too old. Is there a problem? Replied Chi Nan with a smile. You just said that you'd definitely be able to take your boss heart from me, Han Qingwu shook her head and said. That's of course. Chi Nan chuckled. With slightly furrowed brows, Han Qingwu forced a smile and said, Manager Chi, I think you're mistaken about that. Tang Xiao's heart has never been mine, and he has a girlfriend already. It's the first campus flower of Shanghai University, Mu Wenying. Please don't joke again later. Teacher Han, I've seen Ms. Mu and she's indeed a rare beauty. I will certainly like such a stunning belle if I were a man. However, I don't think her place inside my boss heart is that significant. Also, I'm rather curious as to how she could become my boss girlfriend. Despite being reluctant to continue talking about this topic, Han Qingwu's heart moved slightly upon hearing Qi Nan's words. I don't quite understand what you mean, Manager Qi. Qi Nan shot Han Qingwu a meaningful look, as she smiled and said, Since you're not an outsider. Then I'll tell you what I have seen and have in mind, Teacher Han. I've seen my boss bring many women here, each of whom is very beautiful and outstanding, such as Ouyang Lulu, the superstar Zhang Xinya, and the magnificent Tang Corporation's general manager Kong Xia. Yet, I can feel that my boss doesn't like them, and he even seems to deliberately keep a distance from them. Perhaps you don't know, but I was surprised to find that my boss has always been very calm whenever he's facing them. Regardless of whatever the issue is regarding them, he seems to treat it as an ordinary matter or something like that. But there's only one person who can make my boss act different. As she spoke up to there, Chi Nan stopped talking. Han Qingwu asked Chi Nan with a blank expression, Who is it? It's you. Said Chi Nan with a serious expression. Me? Asked Han Qingwu in disbelief. But why me? Don't tell me you haven't realized it yet? Asked Chi Nan. My boss sometimes treats you well, and he looks at you in a daze for a few seconds in some occasions, while he's also very indifferent toward you some other times, like he's trying to deny you. Those changes in his mood or emotional changes are all because of something that you brought to him, I think. Stupefied, though Han Qingwu stared at Chi Nan. Her mind was actually replaying all the scenes of what she had been through with Tang Xiao all this while. She realized that Qi Nan was right. Tang Xiao had indeed stared at her in a daze a few times. Sometimes, there was a hint of gentleness in his eyes, and there was also some occasions that he was indifferent to her, with a cold and detached feeling within. Furthermore, there were also pain and grief in his eyes sometimes, as well as hatred and animosity. This, why was that? Patting Han Qingwu's shoulder, Qi Nan smiled and said, Teacher Han, although I don't know what happened between you and my boss, you're the only woman who can make him emotionally unstable. So I'm congratulating you. If you can seize this opportunity well, then you will perhaps become our lady boss in the future. I, Han Qingwu's mouth opened as she wanted to explain. Yet she found that Chi Nan didn't give her a chance to speak again and went straight upstairs. Chi Nan's elaborate remark, however, sent a stream of joyous mood to her heart. Chi Nan's comment about her becoming her lady boss was especially sweet. Quickly after, Han Qingwu came to the third floor under Chi Nan's guidance. When she entered the deluxe room, she took a look at the luxurious and extravagant private dining box. And only after seeing Tang Xiao did her expression turn somewhat unnatural. Boss, Teacher Han has arrived, reported Qi Nan with a smile. Tang Xiao got up. 
Despite feeling somewhat helpless inside, he squeezed out a smile and showed an amiable, friendly manner, Teacher Han. I've ordered some good dishes, and have prepared a good red wine as well. Well, since I invited you to a feast today, then I'll become a good host and entertain you well. Having said that, Tang Xiao pulled the opposite chair and motioned for Han Qingwu to sit there. Han Qingwu, however, turned her head slowly. She found that Qi Nan had already withdrawn and closed the door from the outside, and looked hesitant before she sat on the chair. Tang Xiao returned to his seat and then said with a smile, Teacher Han, you seem pale. What happened? Han Qingwu shook her head and stared at Tang Xiao for a while. She straightly looked at Tang Xiao, who was looking at her like a dear person to him, before she said, I don't expect to have a meat pie fall upon me from the sky. Such is this feast, I don't think you called me without a good reason, am I right? So tell me, what is it that you want from me? Having what he had in mind pointed out that bluntly, Tang Xiao looked somewhat awkward. He recalled his indifferent and detached attitude toward Han Qingwu before, as he touched his nose and forced out a smile. You're really intelligent and considerate, Teacher Han. I just realized that you're simply a living goddess of wisdom. Nothing can escape your eyes, it seems. Pfft. Han Qingwu couldn't help laughing. It was the first time for her to hear such a nauseating sentence from Tang Xiao. Then, she rolled her eyes and snorted, humph, excessive addressing and attention usually have evil intentions behind it. Just spit it out and don't fawn on me. What exactly is your purpose? Tang Xiao clapped his hands and smilingly said, Look, look at you, what did I just tell you? You're really smart. Anyways, I actually don't have too big a matter to trouble you, it's just that I possibly have some urgent matters in the near future, so I'm afraid I will have to take a leave for a few days. Thus, I'm hoping that you will approve it, Teacher Han. You're asking for a leave of absence? Han Qingwu's tone hiked up as she looked at Tang Xiao angrily. No way. Are you going to relive your old mistakes again? I really do have some matters to deal with. Tang Xiao forced a bitter smile. Please think about it. I'm a big boss, and there are many things I need to deal with. I've been staying on campus every day in the last two weeks to study, and many things have already been accumulated. If I don't deal with it, then things will become very troublesome. You, just please remember when I saved your life back then, and give me a few days off. I promise that it won't delay my studies at all. What are going to do for asking a few days off, exactly? Asked Han Qingwu after being silent for a while. Kong Xia contacted me today saying that a very important product of the magnificent Tang Corporation will be released to the market in the near future, so I need to pay attention to this matter. Additionally, my friend and I are investing real estate in Shanghai and the project is about to start soon, so I need to finalize the final cooperation plan with him. Also, I probably have to make a trip to the South China Sea, as there are important things that need to be addressed there as well. South China Sea? What are you going to do there? Asked Han Qingwu with a puzzled expression. I'm going to buy an island, Tang Xiao answered. Han Qingwu rolled her eyes, you're just bullsh asterisk ting me, aren't you? Are you only able to think of such a ridiculous, absurd excuse? I'm not joking with you. I'm going to buy an island in the southern part of South China Sea, said Tang Xiao seriously. Staring blankly, Han Qingwu was silent for more than 10 seconds before she finally said, I only had a few classes to teach recently. Furthermore, I'm not feeling well and am not in a good mood as well, so I'm going to take a few days off, too. If you promise to take me with you to the South China Sea, then I'll choose to believe you. What do you want to do? Are you going to watch me? Asked Tang Xiao in a strange tone. It's good that you can get it, humph, Han Qingwu snorted. If anything, I must go out to refresh my mind. Promise me that you'll bring me. If you don't. You, besides being helpless and forcing out a bitter upon seeing how Han Qingwu threatened him, Tang Xiao had no other emotions at all. 
After thinking for a short while, he then nodded and said, I can take you with me, but you must accept my conditions first. What conditions? Han Qingwu stretched out her hands and said, If I have some matters that need to be managed in the future, then you must approve my applications for leave. And you're not allowed to forbid and stop me as long as I pass the exam at the end of the year. Even if I don't attend classes on the campus for the whole semester, you will not speak about that nor will you make things difficult for my academic credits. I promise. Han Qingwu happily answered. To be honest, dealing with a class in charge teacher like you makes me worried and happy at the same time. Tang Xiao shook his head and forced a smile. Anyhow, the dishes will be coming up soon, let's chat while we eat. Really, not long after Tang Xiao talked about it, the room's door was knocked and pushed open from the outside. Chi Nand personally carried a plate and came in with a few beautiful attendants and put the dishes and wine on the table. Afterward, Chi Nand said with a smile, Boss, the dishes you ordered have been served. Just call me directly if you have other needs. Okay. Off you go then. Tang Xiao waved and replied. After savoring the meal and drinking the wine, Han Qingwu and Tang Xiao chatted a bit. When they were halfway through the dinner, Han Qingwu stared at Tang Xiao and suddenly said, There was a hot news in our campus today saying that you've announced your relationship with Mu Weining, is that right? It's only a ruse, a fake relationship, Tang Xiao shook his head. I became notoriously famous out of nowhere, and it was rather baffling. Many girls in the campus are confessing to me, to the point of getting me annoyed and vexed. Mu Weining, in the other hand, faces the same situation, so we both discussed it and decided to pretend to be a couple just to thwart them. So, you two are pretending to be a couple? Han Qingwu felt happy inwardly, yet she kept maintaining a calm expression on the surface. So to say, the news is false? Yeah, my dorm mates called me before about that, and I read the news on the campus forum as well. That hug was intentional, and we did that for the others to see it, Tang Xiao nodded. Ah, it turns out to be like that. Learning the truth of the matter, Han Qingwu's depressed feeling disappeared all of sudden and was replaced by an inexplicable happiness.